Her grief and defiance. Charleston turns to faith as the families of the victims deliver a remarkable message in court. I will never talk to her ever again. I will never be able to hold her again. But I forgive you. We are now learning much more about the young suspect in the massacre at the Emanuel AME Church, and we have team coverage from South Carolina. Fires and floods, wildfires tear through five states. The all-out fight on the ground. Leave the line, Jay. Let's get out of here. And in the air, plus flooding fears, waterlogged in the center of the country, the hail, and that deadly lightning, and the storm now on the move. Missing chef, the man who once cooked for president, the champ from Iron Chef. And the winner is... Chef Shire. Disappearing in the mountains, the tough terrain, and the clues left behind, the latest on the desperate search this morning. And battle for the ball. A-Rod's historic shot sends him into the record book. See ya! He did it in style! He joins the 3,000 hit club with a home run! He gets the applause, but about the ball, the fan who caught it, and why he may never give it back. Live from ABC News in New York, this is Good Morning America. You won't want anything. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. We were having a conversation about baby food, but we'll now move on to the actual news. Yes. Uh, coming up this morning, we have new developments to report in that prison escape story. Officials now confirming there have been two possible sightings of the killers who broke out of a maximum security prison in upstate New York. There's been a massive manhunt ever since. Where the men were possibly seen and why another prison worker has now been placed on leave. That's coming up in just a moment. Uh, but we do begin here with the latest in the massacre at the Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Overnight, a packed vigil. Thousands of people look at this locking arms. You can hear them singing songs and remembering the nine people that were shot dead inside that church. This after a dramatic and very moving courtroom confrontation between the families of the victims and the young suspect, Dylan Roof. ABC's Steve Osinsami beginning our coverage in Charleston this morning. Good morning, Steve. Good morning to you, Paula. I have to tell you, I'm still struck by something we're seeing this morning, days after the killings here. People are still marching up with flowers in their hands and grief on their faces to pay their respects to the, to the people who were killed here. And, and these are people of all ages and all colors. The police have set up a barricade to make more room for them in the street. Authorities are also telling us this morning that the 21-year-old they have in custody who reportedly wanted to start a race war is confessing to the murders here. At 21-year-old Dylan Roof's first court appearance, a judge decided to keep him locked up with a million-dollar bond. You're charged with nine counts of murder and one count of possession of a weapon during the commission of a violent crime. While off camera, the families of the nine people he's accused of murdering at a Bible study were speaking out with surprising compassion for Roof. He could hear their every word, the daughter of Ethel Lance speaking to him directly. I will never talk to her ever again. I will never be able to hold her again. But I forgive you. The mother of Tawanza Sanders shed tears as she spoke. Police say Roof meant to kill African Americans. We welcome you Wednesday night in our Bible study with open arms. You have killed some of the most beautifulest people that I know. Every fiber in my body hurts and I'll never be the same. But the sister of Reverend DePayne Middleton says she's struggling. For me, I'm a work in progress, and I acknowledge that I am very angry. But one thing DePayne has always joined in and our family with is that she taught me that we are the family that love built. We have no room for hate, so we have to forgive. And I pray God on your soul. Her cousin, also a reverend, tells us she's grieving badly. She was my big cousin, she was my big sister, and everything she did, I wanted to do it too. A near capacity crowd came to this college basketball arena for a vigil. Beloved, if you will think about the nine names. Praying for the dead Friday night. If that young man thought he was going to divide this community or divide this country with his racial hatred, we are here today and all across America resoundingly say he miserably failed. The families here are still waiting for the medical examiner 
to finish his process and release them the bodies so that they can begin the planned funerals. Dan. Steve, thank you. And what the mayor said about the failure to divide that community, very powerful. Steve Ozensami, thank you once again. Meanwhile, we are starting to get a fuller picture this morning of the suspected gunman, Dylan Roof. We all saw him in court with his bull cut and baby face and dead eyes. Meanwhile, we're hearing contradictory things from his friends. Some say Roof was an outspoken and unabashed racist, but now a black friend is coming forward to say Roof was not a hater at all. ABC's Cecilia Vega is covering this angle of the story. Police say Dylan Roof walked into that Charleston church with a premeditated plan to kill. My mission is to bring justice for this community and especially for the victims in this case. This morning, search warrants shedding new light on one of the deadliest attacks on a house of worship in U.S. history. Investigators say before the massacre, Roof joined Bible study in the church basement, praying for an hour. Then he stood up, pulled out a handgun, and opened fire, shooting each of his victims multiple times, standing over one of them and uttering what police call a racially inflammatory statement. But on Friday, he barely said more than a syllable in court. What is your age? 21. You're 21 years old. Are you employed? No, sir. His friends are talking, revealing more details about the 21-year-old high school dropout. Caleb Brown says he and Roof have been friends since childhood, hanging out as recently as last year. The stuff that he got in trouble for at school was always just like the little tiny behavioral tiss tiss don't don't do that kind of things. Nothing violent. In fact, he says the friend he knows is not a bigot at all. Who I knew him as.